So the concept of median follow-up is very used in studies that have time to event outcomes, studies like prospective or, or retrospective cohorts and many, many clinical trials. When reporting the length of follow-up, usually the aim is to describe how long the study was able to observe the enrolled patients. And why to do that? Report the median follow-up is important because it's when you tell everyone if you had enough time to observe if the events of interest would happen or not. In other words, it's one way to inform if your data is, is mature or not. Okay, good. The problem now is how to calculate it. Well, fortunately or not, there are many ways to do that, which brings some confusion to this topic. The first and more naive method to do that is just to obtain a median of the observed times of all patients. Let me show here how it's done. So we can just do uh, descriptive statistics. For example, here's my time variable. I like to show the mean, the median. I do not need this. And okay. So, using this method, my median follow up is 36 years. In this case, I have a long cord here. The problem with this method is that it tends to underestimate follow up because of early events. So another way to do that is using reverse Kaplan-Meier method. And the logic is not that difficult. As you can see here, when you see the number of patients at risk, this number is going down. But there are two reasons why the number at risk drops over time. A patient can die, a patient can either die or his data can be censored because of loss of follow-up, for example. Looking merely at the number at the risk table treats those two situations identically. If someone dies, you don't know how long they would have been followed. So from the point of view of tracking follow-up time, the roles of deaths and censoring are sort of reversed. That's why we use reverse kaplan meyer So in the reverse kaplan meyer if you use the default, default method in, in normal kaplan meyer where one denotes an event and zero denotes sensory, you will reverse that using zero as an event and one as sensory. So let me show how it's done here in SPSS. You can do a normal kaplan meyer However, instead of your event being one, it will be zero and I don't need the sort of table here I only need the median and voila by reverse Kaplan Meyer my follow-up time was 36 years and the same as the median but it usually is not the case usually this number is higher so this is how it's done in SPSS however when there are ties in the data in the sense that some patients have exactly the same event times, then this would not be exactly correct and we would be at risk of overestimation. So I will show you how to calculate the reverse kaplan meyer take this into account using R. I did not make this following code. I will leave the link in the description below to give the credits for the person who did that. So let's load some package. We will need this package. And this one. In order to import the data set from SPSS, you will also need uh, let's work on this, okay? So let's import the data set. To read, see which is the extension of data set that came from SPSS.
and then in order to have the medium follow up that we want to see here that, that our median follow-up using this method was also 36 years so although here all the three methods agree with each other usually they don't I believe the most used method is the reverse Kaplan Meyer at least in my field so that's it and thanks for watching